Hello folks, come on in, let's huddle up. Heck, it's been a while since I've talked to you and I've missed you. We've had a lot of good things happening and some tough things. First, uh, let's recap very quickly the Jet victory over the New England Patriots. I mean, it was an improvement, of course, on both sides of the ball. The offense showed some great improvement uh, with their play selection, I would think, as well as execution. We all saw Mark Sanchez go downfield, more open things up. Coach Schottenheimer uh, certainly played a less conservative offensive game than he did against the Ravens. Of course, the Ravens was another animal. Offensive line did very well. The defense, the Jets' defense, holding New England to 14 points was phenomenal. Phenomenal. And, and you know, you got to give that defensive line, well, the entire defense, a lot of credit. Chris Jenkins was a force for us in that middle. With Chris being lost, with Pace being out, guys have stepped up and played the kind of defense it takes to win championship games. Both sides of the ball obviously played more disciplined and a great example is the lack of penalties. The first week we had 15, this week we had six. I think that shows some better focus in itself. The pass pressure on Brady was at times wonderful. Taylor made the big play to knock the ball loose. Prior to that, uh, at times, New England did a good job on Brady's pass to Moss where he made the one-handed catch. Uh, Brady actually was able to come to a stop and a standstill there. He had so much time. Uh, we don't get that much time to be looking like a statue while we're in the pocket. So uh, the, the Patriots did a pretty good job, but uh, hey man, I'm still uh, happy about the victory we had last week uh, over New England. Now, that puts us in a great position because this week, who are we going to see? The division leading to an old Miami Dolphins. And I know you folks have seen them play. You football fans have seen either their Minnesota game or the first game up at Buffalo. They've won two road games. They're ready. They're going to be an opposing uh, team that uh, can get quite a lead in their division if they pull off this victory against the Jets this week. I think... Uh, we got to talk about the Jets' preparation for this game. You prepare for each opponent, you have a routine. Well, this week's routine has been uh, interrupted somewhat by an off-the-field incident uh, dealing uh, with the DWI and Braylon Edwards. Uh, what happens to we players, players on the team, is you think about it. You can't help think about it. You're being asked about an off-the-field uh, uh, problem that uh, had it not occurred, you would be thinking of the Miami Dolphins more often than not. Uh, seeing players uh, over the years, myself included, uh, having breached a rule, uh, I know how it affects teammates. There was a time... Uh, when I was a player, we were down in San Diego the night before the game. I got upstairs from the team meeting uh, to my room at 10 after 11 rather than before 11. Uh, whatever the reason was, uh, there was no justification on my behalf. I was 10 minutes late. But the coach didn't start me the next day. The punishment was, we're not going to start uh, Joe here for San Diego game. And um, it was a personal uh, decision, just like this is a personal decision. Really, it's Rex Ryan's decision. Back then, my coach was Ken Schiff. He was uh, an interim coach for the last game or two there, and a fine coach he was. Meantime, I learned that was more of a distraction for everybody, wondering about when you're going to put the guy in the game, meaning me or Braylon Edwards. The rest of the players want to prepare for this game. They don't want to have doubts floating around in their minds. Until 
Rex Ryan, Coach Ryan decides what he's going to do with Braylon Edwards, it's going to be another extra focus breaker. Now, the team may very well know, okay, guys, I'm Coach Ryan, and I'm going to tell you, we're going to bring Braylon in the game in the second series, the third series, the fourth series. We're going to open the game this way in this formation where we wouldn't need Braylon in this formation. Excuse me, what this is leading to again is not giving your team the best chance to win the game. If you're going to punish Braylon, do it within the rules. If he's available to play, you're playing to win. Who are you punishing out there? You're punishing your team by not having your best on the field. Okay, that being said, whew, glad I got that off my chest. I'll be back to you to talk pregame uh, uh, about what I think of the Miami Dolphins and about what I think of the Jets' chances uh, in a day or so. But right now, I wish we would get the straight talk and not smoke screens and don't put your players in a position where they don't know, where they're guessing, where their mind is not focused on the game. You want to be thinking about the Dolphins, not about when this guy is going to come in. Don't tell us something that's kind of foggy. You use them or you don't. When you use them, use them as soon as you normally would. I'll be back at you another time very soon. Ready? Break!